consulting business development. That's the topic for today. Welcome to your consulting business podcast. My name is Russell Pearson, and this is episode number 20. Uh, we come to you every single week with one of these episodes, whether you're listening to us on the podcast or on YouTube. If you uh, didn't know that we were on YouTube, I'd love you to come over and check us out and subscribe. If you're here on YouTube, do subscribe. Uh, otherwise, just subscribe on your favorite podcast platform of choice so that you can get new episodes of your consulting business uh, podcast every single week. Um, my name is Russell Pearson. Now, if we haven't met before, it's great to meet you, but uh, my background is uh, a little over 25 years, so we're talking about maybe 26 years, in the realm specifically of sales, marketing, and promotion, but certainly in the consulting space of that. So providing advisory services, consulting services around marketing, sales, and promotion. Uh, and what's come uh, off the back of that over the last 15 years is actually serving consultants themselves uh, in enabling them to build sales machines and marketing machines so that they can have consistent work. I know there's a lot of consultants out there that are that are living literally on the roller coaster ride of of uh, of projects or uh, client contracts where they've got uh, a lot of work and then no work and then a lot of work and then no work and they're just riding that roller coaster. Uh, and so I help people avoid that. And the main thing I help them avoid is actually getting a job because uh, when I'm talking about consulting businesses, I'm talking about the, the business owner of a consulting practice uh, or the business operator of a consulting practice, not an employee. Now, <clears throat> if you are an employee consultant, there are all sorts of tips and tricks that you'll be able to actually get off the back of an episode, particularly like today, where we're going to be talking about business development because it has so many different um, applications throughout your consulting um, work, yeah, everything that you're doing on a daily basis and around communication and all those other areas, especially influence. And uh, it, it may be useful for you, but the, the, the crux and the focus for it is very much around that, that consultant who runs their own race, who runs their own business. And today, uh, we really want to talk about developing of opportunities. Now, business development or uh, BDMs, so business development managers, <laughs> are are often a thing that a consultant doesn't want to be. <laughs> they don't want to be doing BDM work because their perception of it is that uh, this is a person who cold calls on a daily basis. This is a person who uh, spams people from LinkedIn. Uh, and you don't need to do any of those things as a professional business development person or just to have the skill of being a prof be able to develop uh, professionally, right? De develop business professionally. Uh, but it is still an option. Right? There, are, If you are ambitious, if you are aggressive, uh, and by aggressive, I mean you want to actually get the results now, if you're not waiting for them, then there's absolutely no reason why you can't just contact somebody and say, uh, this is the reason why I'm contacting you. The challenge when it comes to business development is making sure, especially for a consultant, that you're coming in at the advisory level of the discussion. And so for a lot of people, depending on their strategy, and that's what we'll talk about a lot today is what strategy should you be using as a consultant? But depending on their strategy, they may come in to be seen as a, a service provider, the, the worst version of it, they're begging for work. Um, they're coming in at a, a place where they're asking the client for something rather than the client asking them. And so there's, there's ways and means to make that happen so that you can actually ensure that you're able to do the work of an advisor, which means that you need to keep that position um, and come in as that position as mentor um, uh, for the consulting practice. Otherwise, you end up having a, a, a client just telling you what they want. Um, and while you know that could be easier, it, it, it's not the work of a consultant. You can, the, someone consults with you, the same as you consult with a doctor, not because you have the answers, because you're looking for the answers. And so if the client has the answers and they just tell you what to do, then it's project work, it's service work at best. Um, and the consulting space is, is different than that. So we're going to talk about how to get clients, how to get uh, opportunities and what it is to do business development. And we'll talk about a few strategies that work really, really well um, uh, in you know, certainly the experience that I've had with uh, clients over the last 15 years. So 
Right. Today, uh, business development has changed. It's it's not what it once was, uh, yet um, there are probably lessons in that. <laughs> Uh, people talk about it being more difficult to get in front of people um, because they're trying to do things that may have been a useful tactic maybe 10 years, maybe even further back, uh, are now flooded with spam, with uh, people pushing uh, into the development space, which makes it very, very noisy. So uh, an example of that in particular is the LinkedIn approach. So people going via LinkedIn to actually uh, prospect with uh, people that they don't know. Um, there are there are ways and means to do it, but the way that I see most people doing it is they actually connect with someone and then make an offer. And uh, while that might feel efficient, it is anything but effective. And usually what end up, ends up happening is someone just closes the door on that relationship near instantly. There are far better ways to do it. Um, and basically it starts with having a process. So if you don't have a process to develop business, then I'm going to give you one in just a moment. But before I do, what is business development? It's not sales. Okay. And that's an interesting thing because a lot of people think that business development or BDM, you know, business development managers are salespeople. <clears throat> and so in, in a sense they are because, you know, sales comes from the word salsa. Uh, salsa means to be welcome into the home. So it's a service-based thing. You know, we, we want to help somebody take a step. Um, but the business development is really the development of opportunities, which you can look at and decide, is this something that I want to take forward to a sales opportunity? So it, it is the step just before. It's not marketing, right? It's not closing the sale. It's the piece in the middle where you're actually developing opportunities. And if, uh, if consultants are not regularly developing those opportunities, what ends up happening is that that roller coaster ride happens where uh, they've got a lot of work on, they stop doing business development, they, uh, the opportunities dry up, but they're not worried about that because they're working very hard and they've got too much on already. Then suddenly a client disappears for a hundred different reasons and they need that work again. And they, they need to then go through a buying cycle, which for a lot of uh, consultants can be anywhere from three to eight months, All right? So uh, number one, you need to know what your buying cycle is. And if you're not tracking how long it takes between connecting with someone to actually engaging them in a, uh, in a project, a contract, a piece of work, a retainer, um, if you're not doing that, then you, you're not going to be aware of how long it actually takes. You may think that you can actually turn it around in a week or a month, but in a lot of cases, that's not the case. So business development is about those creating of opportunities, <laughs> uh, which means that you ideally, you need to have a process. And the process I like to prescribe for most experts, consultants, service providers <laughs> is connect, qualify and invite. Now, this is just to bring someone into your world. So you're connecting with them wherever they are, and I'll get into the detail in a moment. So you're connecting with them, you're qualifying that they are the people that you should be speaking to. It doesn't mean that they're ready right now, but they're ideally within your target market. You invite them to a next step, and that next step really should not be a buying step because what you're trying to do is you're trying to, to position yourself for value rather than as the salesperson, because you've got to come in as the consultant. Now, I'm going to flip this around for a second, because there are a lot of people out there that say you should not be selling at all, and that you should be waiting for people to ask you. And I think that's a massive mistake. You need to make offers, you need to ask people for the sale. It's just when you do it is key. And uh, many marketing people in particular talk about nurturing, we will nurture these people until they raise their hand and ask for your help. But what I've found over the years uh, is that that is a really slow road with a lot of lost opportunities because people don't even know to ask some of the time. Uh, they're not in a they're not in a buying uh, mentality. They they're not ready to make any buying decisions. Um, they're not even potentially researching. They're not problem aware. And so the trick for a consultant is to actually get into conversations with people so you can understand where they're at. So we'll start from the start, it's three steps. <laughs> connect, let's say that the only way you connect with them is LinkedIn, okay, so yes, we can make a connection on LinkedIn, but we're not just gonna like bombard them with stuff, it's just, hey, great to connect, 
I see you're doing this. Have a chat with them. Like you don't, it, it, you're literally building a relationship with this person, all right? So connect with them. Now you might connect with them at a networking function, all right? Well, there's a way to connect with someone there. Uh, they may connect with you, let's say, if you've actually got some marketing infrastructure in place, they might connect with you through a lead magnet or a landing page or something that you've got as a, an opt-in, right? <laughs> there are so many different ways that people can connect with you. But after they connect, it shouldn't be like, all right, well, I'm just going to wait until uh, until they now talk to me to, to move the conversation forward. Each of these steps is very, very purposeful. We purposefully connect to people we believe could be our ideal target market. Now we connect with them, we have a bit of a chat to them, either via text, messenger, um, uh, email, verbally, however we're going to do it. Maybe we're even connected by the phone because of a referral. We want to understand a little bit about them. And there should be probably a couple of questions in there without interrogating someone to say, is this the right person? Now, you should know what your qualifying questions are. Do you work with businesses with less than 20 people? Do you work with businesses over a thousand people? Do you, uh, do you work with uh, uh, organizations in a certain sector? Do you work with a specific role within those organizations, right? And so there are some real key qualifiers that you want to understand because if it's not if if they're not in the space not even in the buying mentality but they never would buy because they don't meet your uh, client profile then there's no reason to I mean you can still have relationships you could you know because yes they might refer you one day but that's very unlikely I can tell you the numbers on referrals one day is very very low it's still good to have connections but you want to have purposeful connections so that you don't dilute your entire audience. Uh, just as a side note, I see a lot of people doing this with their email lists, right? They, they'll, they'll tell me that they've got 4,000 people on an email list. <laughs> Maybe 200 of them are actually the sort of people they want to work with, which means that there's just a massive waste of energy that goes into, even if it's just sending out an email, you might think, oh, well, it's not, gonna, it's not that big a deal. But you've got to remember, bulk email only connects with about 30% of its audience. So if it's only connecting with about 30% of the audience, it's like none of the right people are seeing it. So get clear about, should this person be in my communication space to intentionally be moving them along? Otherwise, you're just going to be wasting a lot of time with people down the track. This is about a prevention method. You want to know now, if this person's not right, disqualify them. That doesn't mean you have to send them away, but it's like, all right, well, that's cool. Good to know who you are. I understand where your position in the world is. Uh, have a great day. Let them, let them go off, right? <laughs> you don't have to uh, just turn them off, for instance. But we connect, we qualify, we then invite. Now, the invite step is a really nice, subtle way of bringing them into our world, probably adding value because we're going to invite them to something that's number one relevant and is of value to them. So let's give you a few examples. Let's say that you're working within a certain sector and you're about to go to that industry conference, for instance. You really uh, want this person to be in your network, you may say, I'm going to this conference, would you like to come too? <laughs> you might do the same thing with just small events around the traps. Uh, you might say, I've got this article that I just wrote that's about your sector, this might be of interest to you, like I invite you to, to, to say yes to it. Um, I'm having an event that's coming up soon. Uh, if you're interested to come, you know, I'll, uh, I'll pay your way or, uh, or I'll give you the free ticket, you know, VIP entry, whatever it might be. Uh, you're inviting them to take a step to understand your world a little bit, to understand how you sit in it. And from that point on, then we're actually moving to the second stage. So that first stage is about connecting, bringing people in. If you're not making connections on a regular basis, as, as a regular basis as you want sales, then your opportunities will dry up. So if you want 10 opportunities to speak to someone in the future, you need at least 10 connections now so that you'll have those opportunities later. So a big part of the roller coaster ride is that people are not making enough connections. They might have a thousand people in their world. Um, and thousands is a good number. Sometimes you don't need more than that. A lot of people think you need these huge numbers, but you don't. But there'll be people dropping off. Now, that'll be because of, of death. They've changed their role. They're no longer qualified. There's a, like a lot of different reasons as to why someone would drop out of that list and potentially without you even knowing. You need to mentally replace that, right? So you, uh, as much as you want new people in your, your, uh, your opportunities in the future, because there's a lot of people that have said no for whatever reason, there's a lot of people you've disqualified for whatever reason, 
you want to be bringing the same amount of people in on the other end. And if you want to grow, you need more than that. Okay, so connecting on a regular basis. If you want to have um, uh, weekly sales conversations, you need to be connecting with people weekly. If you want to have monthly sales conversations, you need to be connecting with people monthly, daily, daily. Okay, so connect, qualify, invite. You're now in their world. You're not. Uh, you're not one of those guys that's pushy and pushing stuff on them. Uh, you've you've actually had a conversation rather than just like hit them with a bunch of questions to qualify them. Uh, just a little tip on being human <laughs> when it comes to uh, conversations is make sure you acknowledge what people say. Uh, I, uh, in training, uh, a lot of consultants in this sales conversation space in particular, I need to really, really emphasize this. You ask a question, they give a response acknowledge their response because otherwise they give a question you ask a question they give an answer you ask a question they give an answer suddenly you've turned into the gestapo and you're just interrogating them right so they don't like that nobody likes that uh make sure you're you're, you're actually being a good human <laughs> and acknowledging what they said you know and if it's relevant to stuff that you know about or if it's relevant uh, to things that are happening in your world. There are so many ways to build uh, rapport and reciprocity through those conversations just by having the, or allowing them to feel heard, right? <laughs> that's just a good human thing to do. So that's the first part, right? Connect, qualify, invite. We're bringing them to here. <laughs> now they're in our world. I, I like to invite them to the barrel. Uh, the barrel is a concept I've talked about before on these podcasts. It's a concept that we talk about and teach in the Forge Business Program. If you're interested in that, let me know. It's it's really this uh, place where we bring community together. So one of the great things to invite people to is your community. Now your community ideally should be aligned to what they want. It should be aligned to the, to the market's needs and wants. Uh, but um, it's up to you what that, that looks like. Have a look at the episodes regarding the barrel. And if you're interested to know what it is to actually build a barrel, uh, which is a barrel of perfect opportunities, then uh, reach up, reach out, or, or wave at me by uh, commenting on this video, or or send me a uh, a question at russell at russellpearson.com. That's pretty easy. That's an easy way to connect with me. I should have said that earlier. So they're in that space. They're in your network. Now we're going to move to the second part of business development, which is to find ways to have conversations with people. Now <clears throat> there are really rough ways to do it which is to just contact people on a regular basis uh, where you're just going, hey, do you need anything? Hey, do you need anything? Don't do that. All we're trying to do is what's going on in your world. We just want to understand what's happening in their world. Again, I see a lot of um, especially employed consultants who, who don't see themselves as business development managers, don't see themselves as salespeople, dive into conversations because they want to make it efficient and they'll call someone up and say, do you need our services right now? And they're like, no, 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 no. And they'll just put the phone down rather than just having a conversation with them and let those opportunities float to the top. So how do you get in conversations with people? Well, there's two ways to do it. <clears throat> One, you have them in your world. So they're at your events, they're in your network. You're actually got, you find opportunities for, for you to be in contact. That's one. Uh, the second is to actually put uh, hand raising opportunities out there. So you might make an offer in your social network. You might make an offer via email. Some small thing along the line of, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of put, uh, putting a little event on for five to ten people uh, where we're going to cover this thing. Let me know if you're interested, right? So say yes if you're interested. They raise their hand to that and then that starts a conversation. And it's also a pre-qualified conversation because the thing that you put your hand up about is often uh, around a gap that you look after. It's a problem that you solve. Now the um, there are you don't have to do that though you could actually just go you know who wants to come to the golf you know who wants to come to the tennis there are so many opportunities for you to get into conversations with people that have got nothing to do with the work that you do at all and so think outside of that work box there are so many ways that you can just get into conversations so you get into a conversation you have a chat with someone um, an easy one is like let's say that your invite was to invite them to an event right. <laughs> Uh, they say yes and they book for the event. After they book, you might call them up and say, I uh, just want to check you've got all the details for the event, right? Any reason to chat is a great reason to chat. So have a reason, right? Uh, one of the ones we used to use in the web design space years ago 
was uh, we would have hosting, right? So we had hosting uh, of all these different websites and I could actually just go into the hosting and go, oh, what's happening with their website? And it would give me all this information. I'm like, that's something I should talk to John about. And so I go, I contact John, I go, John, I'm not sure if you're aware, but you've got all these people landing on this page. Um, how are you seeing it from your end? And then suddenly you're in a conversation, but it's a purposeful, intentional conversation. Um, and, and suddenly you're talking about what's happening with their business, for instance. So get an opportunity to chat by putting up hand raises or actually contacting them with purpose. Like there's a reason to actually have that conversation. <laughs> and then just make sure you follow up. I like to uh, I look like to look at a detective style, you know, Columbo style. Um, you know, by the way, uh, what's happening with the business? By the way, uh, how how much are you looking to grow this year? By the way, um, have you got any plans around this thing that that I happen to do? There are there are lazy ways to do it, and there's you know more sophisticated ways to do it. But the by the way line straight into that is really really nice and easy to use. So I always throw a by the way in there because I want to know. I want to know what's actually happening in their world, and I think curiosity is such a big part of that. Like uh, being curious about them, not just trying to drive them into work. That's what business development is all about because you're developing the business, you're discovering the opportunities. And at the same time as doing it, you're building no like and trust. So while you don't have to do all this content necessarily around nurturing a person along, sometimes it can work, but you don't need to do that because your conversations are nurturing that person along. You're, they're getting to know you, you're getting to know them. You know, the, uh, the no like and trust principle, uh, if you don't know what it is, is that someone ideally needs to know who you are to be able to like you, they need to like you to actually buy from you, they need to trust you to actually get into bed with you for a lifetime of business, right? So it's the equivalent of marrying with marketing. But the same thing happens on the other side because it's not just about the client judging you, especially in the consulting space, especially in the advisory space, it's do you know them, right? Do you like them enough to actually spend your time to help them out? You know, And do you trust that they're gonna take what you're bringing to the table and actually do something effective with it? So you can flip that all around and it is very much a two-way conversation. So connect, qualify, invite, they're in our world. We now find opportunities to chat with them, usually by raising their hands. And when we are chatting with them, there is one thing in particular we're looking for or listening for, probably even more. <clears throat> uh, a colleague of mine has a, a, an app called Two Ears. <laughs> I love the concept of it. Uh, it's off the, uh, the old quote that you, you know, you should, you've got two ears and one mouth, you should actually communicate with that capacity. So uh, listen twice as much as you speak. And um, it's a really, uh, it's a useful principle because if you're listening, what are you listening for? And I like the concept of making sure that you're listening for triggers. Like, are there things that would trigger you to go, they may actually have some of the challenges that I solve? Because you're not trying to drive straight into it all the time because you just want to know what's going on in their world. If you can refer them to someone else because of a problem that they've got that's got nothing to do with you, that's, that makes you look great. If you can actually go, oh, I know a resource to help you out with that, that's going to be very helpful for them. And also, it helps you become the trusted advisor talked about that before how do you know when you're the trusted advisor when they start asking for your ex uh, sorry they start asking for your advice outside of your area of expertise uh you know it's the equivalent of speaking to someone and they go you know what my my uh my daughter's getting married soon uh incredible oh congratulations fantastic yeah just trying to find a reception is tough do you know any good reception places uh, that I should be speaking to, right? That's asking for your advice outside of your area of expertise. And that's how you know. That's how you know that this person trusts you. So that's all part of that journey, but it's through the conversation. It's through talking to these people on a semi-regular basis. And I'll give, I'll give you my, my key uh, strategy towards the end of this, uh, this session. But the, this session, this podcast, this video, wherever you're actually watching it from, the, uh, the real step in there is going, all right, are they saying things that are telling me they've got the challenges that I solve? For, for instance, if someone says to me, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just trying to grow. It's just a bit of a struggle. All right. So that tells me that there are things that are happening that are not enabling to get the growth that they want. Now, it could be team based. So not necessarily my, my area. I do help people with some of those team areas, but I'm more around the building of the income, the building of the profit. Right. So. Uh, I will ask further questions once hearing a trigger like that. Now, another trigger might be, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm going two steps forward and uh, two steps back. You know, I feel like I'm stuck on a treadmill. You know, there, there are all these metaphor things that people say. And, and ideally, you should know what yours are. So it's a really good process to, to write them out. What are the things that people would say that would make you go, huh? That would trigger you to go, huh? They may actually uh, need my assistance. All right. And so, and then that'll enable you to ask uh, further questions. Now, once those triggers go off, there's multiple ways you can actually deal with it. I like the idea of, um, oh, that's really interesting. I ask a few more questions just to make sure it is relevant to me. And I go, well, I might have a few ideas if you want to set up an appointment and have a chat for 10, 15 minutes. All right. The reason I do that, and a lot of people will say, well, why don't you just go in and actually speak to them then? You absolutely can. But if you're in the middle of a family barbecue or if you're uh, at a networking function where you don't really have the time to have a proper com proper conversation, <clears throat> don't try and make the sale then. Don't try and uh, close them on that spot. Make an intentional place for you to have that conversation about that intentional thing. It just makes the process much cleaner as far as you going, all right, we're coming here to talk about this thing rather than what I see a lot of people do catching up for coffee and having no intention to the to the conversation, right? So what is the trigger that goes, oh, I might have a few ideas, then you take them to some uh, conversation, which I call a priority call, um, to enable you to see is the opportunity now. Because we can develop these opportunities, but if there's no priority to do anything about them, um, this is where I see a lot of people either get ghosted because uh, they offer something too early, um, or they are chasing clients for six to eight months, which is horrible, but I see it happen a lot. And it's usually because they haven't asked um, this one question in particular, but they haven't done this process, which is a priority call. And we teach it in the Forge um, business program, which and just for if, you, if you're not sure what the, the Forge business program is, it's for experts. So uh, consultants and advisors in particular, uh, but also expert service providers who are looking to grow their business. You know, that's essentially what it is. And we take people through three phases. Uh, one, making sure they have the foundations to get clients on a regular basis. Number two is how do we actually start to build and automate that and double the uh, amount of clients they can get based off the scale of growth that they want. And then finally, how to really like decide, do we want to have a business that runs without us or do we want to actually just go for profit and increase what we can do on our lifestyle, right? So there are multiple options, but in essence, about growing your business to support a lifestyle that you love. So in that program, we have a thing called the priority call. And, and the core of it is making sure that you know the answer to three things. Number one, is there a gap with this person or with this organization that is yours to help them with? So consultants help people go from here to there. Now, I don't know where that is for you, but there'll be a place where your clients are and you're helping them to get to somewhere else. It's very transformational, right? So is there a gap that you can actually help people bridge? Um, you need to know that. And if there's not a gap that you can see, then don't take the conversation further because you're potentially going to burn that client by trying to sell them something they don't need yet. The second one is, uh, is there a problem that they actually vocalize? Because uh, <laughs> again, <laughs> probably more younger consultants than anyone else, uh, especially uh, the, the people who have the entrepreneur tag uh, attached to them, uh, are always trying to build something that people need rather than what people want. Um, uh, which is a problem because if you don't want, if people don't want it, <laughs> they're not going to buy it, right? Um, and often the the person who builds something for what they need has to do a very long education process to actually have them believe that they do want it. Much easier is to go to those people who already are problem aware, and there is a large enough amount of those people out there in the market that you just need to find where they are. So you've identified there's a gap. Great. You need to have them tell you what the problem is. If they don't perceive there's a problem, there's nothing to talk about. And so that's a large part of developing the opportunity. Is there something to solve here? Now, you might clearly be able to see what the problem is, but they need to see that there's a problem. Otherwise, they're not going to try and fix it, right? Uh, there are, again, so many people out there that are going, you need this thing. And they're like, I don't think so. And they go, you do. I can see the problem. Here's the answer. I don't see it. And so you have to go through this education process. So much easier to just have some form of diagnostic or have a very simple question. Here's the simplest question you can ask. 
You want to go from here to there. Yep, great, fantastic. What have you tried? What have you tried so far? And they will tell you all the problems. They will tell you where it's not working. They will tell you what the problem is. And then you don't need to, you know, put your foot around. They'll, <laughs> they'll tell you specifically. Oh, it's a very Australian thing to say, pussy foot. But uh, it means tiptoe, right? <laughs> it's like my cat. Uh, does anyone know what my cat's name is? Uh, if you don't, it uh, it's Cauliflower Linzel McFloof. And she does pussyfoot around the house. He tiptoes around. So the uh, the, the process is to, they have to have a, a problem. They need to vocalize it. And finally, you need to ask them, is this a priority? Because if it's not a priority for them right now, they're not ready to make a buying decision. Now, you might hear something like this. Oh, it's a priority. You know, within two years, we really want to be thinking about this. That's not a priority. All right, so... Is this a priority? If you hear, yes, it is, we want to do something now, or yes, it is, we want to do something within the month, then that is a priority. And you go, okay, well, let's let's set up a time to actually talk about how we might be able to solve that, right? So you move them to that space. That's sales on the other side of that. All you've done at this point is developed the opportunity, all right? So you've connected, you've qualified, you've invited somebody. You've then moved to a chat of some sort. You've had a very quick conversation that has triggered you to go, we should talk more. You have a priority call, which enables you to see is now the right time. Suddenly the opportunity is live and we move to the sales process. But that's what business development is. Now I have a process called the 120 list. And that's something that I teach to clients, uh, both in the Forge, but also the, um, the appointment challenge clients. And the 120 list is one of the more valuable things that I ever developed. It was the, it was working back off the mathematics of what did I need to ensure that I never needed to do another marketing thing again? I looked at, all right, if I spoke to this amount of people, because I really understood that conversations were the um, the road to a sale. If I spoke to this amount of people that I would have uh, this many sales because I was tracking my numbers, which would lead to this average dollar sale, which would lead to this amount of income. And I worked out that all I needed to speak to was 120 people in a 90 day period. And funnily enough, a number of those people that were magically on that list uh, were my clients. So I was already speaking to them on a regular basis. So it ended up working out that I only needed to talk to maybe six or seven people in an entire week from that list and I would be hitting my numbers. And I did that for, for such a long time and it killed it. It was fantastic, it did so well. Uh, problem with me is I really love the experimentation and the laboratory, which is marketing and sales. And so while I still do that when I need to, I usually play with a whole bunch of different things just to make sure that I can actually help people in different industries and help them uh, with some different strategies. But the 120 list, it, it, it is the thing that I always default back to. If I'm ever stuck, I call up my 120 list. Now, the question is what goes on the 120 list? More than happy to share that with you. Uh, but in essence, it's the mayors of the town. If you don't know what that is, come and speak to me. I can actually tell you all about the mayors of the town. Mayors of the town, your clients, your past clients that you know don't dislike you, right? The, the ones that you still got a good relationship with, uh, potential referral partners, other people that like uh, sh that are. It's the people that are within your world that will enable you to get other sales. It's not necessarily referral partners. A lot of people are. Uh, trying to develop just referral partner conversations, but it's broader than that. The 120 list actually um, uh, has an extra component, which I hadn't really considered until the pandemic, which is in Melbourne, we were locked down for quite some time. And I, I went back to my 120 list and I started calling people up. Four o'clock every day, I'd start calling people. Uh, and I found it was really helping them. You know, the, the, I was told at the time, oh, I won't call anyone right now because I don't think they want to hear from me. But I was calling these people and they, they loved hearing from me because they were stuck in their own bubble. They were lonely. They wanted new ideas. They wanted new energy. And so uh, our conversations ended up having me get off the phone with me feeling great and them feeling great as well. And a lot of them obviously turned into clients or referred me to other clients or told me about opportunities that I should engage with. And so the 120 list was my strategy for doing that. And it's a fantastic strategy for any type of business development. The important part, very much like the connect uh, piece that I talked about earlier, is that you need to tend to the list just like a garden. 
So if people are not right, they shouldn't be on the list, take them out, replace them with new people. And so you've got to be tending that list. You've got to make sure that you've got, you know, you're going for the 120, but you pull out any of the weeds, the people that are that are not going to be uh, useful in that process, and that you're replacing it with ideal um, 120 list individuals. So um, <clears throat> I've given them the process. Hopefully that's really helpful. If you didn't have a process before, now you have one. Uh, 120 list is an excellent way of doing things. Uh, there are some mistakes to avoid, especially like uh, rushing ahead to the sale. Yeah, a lot of the time um, when we're very clear about how long it takes to, to get to a sale because we have our average, we can reduce that. So maybe it was three months. <laughs> we can reduce it to two months, but that still gives you a lot of time that you can actually do this process across. So there's no rush, uh, even though it's very purposeful. If they're in the invite plate, uh, we've invited them to something, all right, fantastic, they're now in our world. How do we develop conversations? You know, uh, if we've connected with them, or how do we actually move to qualify that they are the right type of people we should be inviting into our world? So there are steps and there are process and the entire thing is very, very intentional and it's all about consulting business development. So it's uh, business development for consultants. Uh, my name's Russell Pearson. For the last 26 years, I've been working in the space of sales, marketing, and promotion and helping people like yourself, other consultants who run their own business is what I do. Do now that's both on the strategy side, but it's also on the program side that we run through the Forge Business Program, which we've got our intensive coming up uh, next month, which is fantastic. They're creating a whole, whole song and dance around that at the moment, and all the clients are going to be flying in for that. That's fantastic. But if you uh, are just discovering this episode for the first time, definitely subscribe to it. Uh, go back and listen to some of the past episodes. They're all got very, very relevant uh, things for the person who is a consultant or an advisor or simply just an expert who gives expert advice uh, through their service, uh, their trade, their, their skill set, right? Um, you can also go to business consult consultingbusinesspodcast.com, that's the one, consultingbusinesspodcast.com will actually give you access to some other resources that we've got available. You can download for absolutely for free. Uh, and if you are interested, we also have a group over on Facebook. I don't know if you're on Facebook much, but it's quite a good and active group future proof business group which is all about adaptability how are we adapting in this ever-changing business world we've got stuff about chat gpt coming up uh, we've got things about changes to remote work and how that's all working and so we're making sure that uh, the businesses are evolving as the environment evolves uh, and making just smart strategic decisions till next time have a fantastic week stay passionate and i will catch you on the next one bye for now Thank you for joining us on your consulting business podcast. Make sure to click the subscribe button for future updates and also make sure to go to consultingbusinesspodcast.com for goodies made especially for you by yours truly. I will see you on the site.